An advanced Next.js application uses different types of content. For example, About Us page is fairly static and can be a good candidate for caching. But what happens when this content changes? The advice you usually hear is to rebuild your Next.js application. And this will work if you are deploying Next.js into Vercel or building a static website. However, if you are deploying Next.js application into containers and are using shared cache, this approach may not work and leave you with old cache data. The way you can fix this is to use route handlers and tags to invalidate cache when this static content gets updated or published by content uh, editors. So let's jump into the code and look at some examples. Also, if you find this video helpful for staying up to date with the JavaScript trends and solving your coding problems, uh, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. I have uh, two applications. One is Express app and another one is Next app. So let's take a look at the Express app. And right here, we basically have one file and I'm using Express. I also use Morgan in a format of tiny so I can log the requests that are coming into this API. Here I have a route. Uh, this is a simulation of a headless CMS route, right? It says content greeting and it just returns the greeting welcome to the dashboard. The next, I have e array of users. So this is my data. And I have app data routes. I have route get users by ID, right? And it gets the user by ID from the array above. And then next, I have uh, put users, right? And I put ID. So if you send a payload with a, let's say, new user's name, right? It will get the user by ID and update that user. And I have app listen, and I'm actually listening on a port 3001 for this API. I also have a next app and this next app basically has two pages. It's an app router and the first is index page and all it does, it says, welcome to dashboard and it has a link uh, and it says, go to dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard page. If we open it up, we can see that it displays the greeting and the username. And the way we're getting user is from the API route, right? And we have a get user function. Also for the greeting, we have get dashboard greeting function. So let's go ahead and take a look at the get user function, right? That's an async function. It just calls localhost 3001 slash user slash ID. And in our case, we're not passing anything. So it's going to get the first user with the ID of one. It has next tags and it also has cache force cache. Currently in next 14, your fetch request will be cached by default. So you don't really need to put cache force cache. However, in next 15, things are going to change and the fetch request will not be cached by default. So if you would like to cache it, you'll have to do cache force cache. Now let's go ahead and take a look at get dashboard greeting. Also, we have a fetch function and this function calls content greeting route. Also, we have tags and says content. And again, we have cache, force cache. Since we're caching our fetch functions, let's take a look at the cache setup. And if you go to cachehandler.mjs, you can see that I'm using Nashka cache handler and I'm using a Redis stack right here for my cache. So it's basically um, defining and setting up Redis for caching. And if you would like to learn how to do it, please check out uh, this video. Since I have Redis configured for Next.js application, I also have a Redis commander installed. So let's go ahead and run the command Redis commander. And we can go ahead and switch to the browser. And you can see that we have Redis right here and there is nothing, there is nothing cached in there. Now let's go ahead and spin up the API server npm run dev. And API is ready and running on a port 3001. And as you can see, I'm using Nodemon to automatically restart API server if I change anything. Now let's go ahead and run the build. We're going to do npm run build. And the build is done. As you can see, all the pages are static. And if you 
take a look right here at the logs in the API server that Morgan provides to us. You can see we got two hits, right? We got users and we got a hit on a content greeting. So let's go ahead and switch to the browser and see what we got in Redis. So if we refresh, we can see that we got two caches and these caches, the first one is for the fetch request and we got localhost 3000 and one and we have content greeting. So that's the route that we hit. And then the second one is for localhost 3001 users slash one. So we fetched the first user. However, what we don't see here is the cache for the routes uh, for index route and the dashboard route. Next documentation says that uh, Next.js automatically renders and caches routes at a build time, but it seems like this is not happening, at least when you use Redis cache. Let's go ahead and switch to VS Code and run the application. So let's do npm run start. The application is ready. Let's go back to the browser and we're going to go to localhost 3000. And now we can see our application. And if we go back to Redis right here and refresh, now we can see that we have a dashboard route cache and index route cache, right? But how do we get dashboard route cache if we actually haven't visited the dashboard, right? We're staying only on the index page. That's what we loaded. However, we have a link go to dashboard and Next.js prefetched the dashboard page for us since we have the link. So this is a prefetching in action and therefore we got a dashboard route cache as well. All right, let's go ahead and visit the dashboard and we can see the message, welcome to dashboard John. Now let's go ahead and look at the scenario when this welcome to dashboard John message changes. Let's switch to the VS code and we're going to go ahead and simulate the scenario where our content managers decided that welcome to the dashboard message is not good enough. So we'll just put hello. So in a content management system, they changed welcome to the dashboard message to hello. Uh, they published it. Um, we got a webhook fired, right? And we decided that whenever the webhook is fired, we're going to be rebuilding the application. So let's go ahead and save changes. And now what we're going to do is rebuild again. So let's uh, run npm run build. And what we're expecting is for the message to actually change, right? Because we are rebuilding and redeploying our application. The next JS finished building. And as you can see, we never got any hits at the API. So meaning our cache data stayed the same. So I guess the message welcome to dashboard is not going to be changed to hello. Let's go ahead and verify that. Let's do npm run start. Let's go ahead, switch to the browser and let's go ahead and refresh. And as you can see, we were refreshing a few times, but we still see welcome to the dashboard John instead of hello. If you use Redis cache and uh, you try to rebuild your application when your content changes, it doesn't seem that your cache will be revalidated uh, during that build time. So what we can do in this case is to try using route handler cache invalidation. So instead of sending the webhook to our build server, we can send it to an API endpoint and we can revalidate the cache that content data using revalidate tag function. So let's go ahead and implement that. So let's uh, close this out. We don't need this. And what we need to do is to go to next app SRC and this app folder, right? We have an app router. We need to create another couple of folders here. So let's go ahead in the app folder. We're going to create a new folder called API. And then we're going to create another folder in the API folder called invalidate content cache. So now in the invalidate content cache, we're going to create a new file called route.ts because we're doing the route handler. And in the route.ts file, we're going to put the following code. Uh, we're going to import revalidate tag from next cache, and then we're going to have an async function get. So, and this get function, when it gets hit, we're going to run the revalidate tag and the tag will be content, right? Because we tagged the content 
fetch request with the tags contents. So we're going to attempt to revalidate data that it fetched from a uh, content greeting route. All right, and then we'll just uh, return response JSON with the result OK. And also one more thing, right? Don't leave this route open to the public. So protect it with a secret or HMAC. And if you want to learn about HMAC and HMAC validation, please check out this video. Let's go ahead and save changes and then rebuild the application npm around build. All right, build finished. Now let's go ahead and run npm run start and start the application. So the application started. Let's go ahead and switch to the browser. Let's go ahead and do another refresh to make sure we are running right here and we are and we still have a welcome to dashboard John. So now let's go ahead and try to revalidate the cache using the route handler, right? So let's go ahead to localhost 3000. We'll do API and we'll do invalidate content cache. All right, let's hit it and we got the result OK. So let's go ahead and switch to the Redis commander here and see what we've got here. So now, as you can see, we revalidated cache for the content and we basically have only the users right here and we have an index page. However, we don't have the dashboard page anymore and we don't have the call to the content greeting endpoint. Cache got invalidated and it's not there anymore. So now if we refresh the dashboard page, we're going to see the new message. Hello, John. And this is right here. So as you can see, you basically can invalidate your cache using route handler if your content changes. This is great and this works when we have fetch function. But what if we don't use fetch? Because most headless CMS will have their own libraries and SDKs. In case we want to use a third party library instead of fetch to retrieve content, we can wrap that SDK function that retrieves content in unstable cache. So let's go ahead and simulate this scenario with Axios. Let's switch to VS Code and let's go ahead and cancel out. Now let's install Axios. npm install Axios. So Axios is installed. Let's add the following code to data content.cs file. So we're going to add the following functions. The first function is going to say get via axis and it's basically returns axis.get and we pass the URL and then we get the data. And if something goes wrong, we just throw an exception uh, or rather error and it's going to say fail to fetch greeting. So now we're going to have get dashboard greeting unstable cache function. It has return unstable cache. It has the get via axis function. And you know, this is the async function that you need to pass to unstable cache. The next uh, argument here is key parts and it should be an array. And we put the string in here, get greeting. And finally, we have options and the options has a uh, tags and we put the tags as a content the same way we did for the fetch function, right? So now let's go ahead and import axis. And also let's go ahead and import unstable cache. All right, we're all set. So let's go ahead and save this file. Now let's go to the dashboard page. And right over here, we will go to page.tsx. And right over here, we have get dashboard greeting and we put unstable cache, right? So we're going to be using uh, get dashboard greeting unstable cache function instead of the one that we used before. So we can use the unstable cache. Let's go ahead and save changes. And finally, to be fair and square, let's go into the API application. And here, instead of hello, we're going to put howdy. So our content changed again. Let's go ahead and save changes and let's go ahead and rebuild the application. So let's do npm run build. Now let's go ahead and run the application npm run start. And let's go ahead and switch to the browser and let's uh, refresh to make sure the app is running. And as you can see, we still have hello John right here. 
So now let's go ahead and revalidate cache right here again. And let's go ahead and refresh. And now we got Howdy John. As you can see, route handler caching validation via hooks can be used for a content that um, doesn't change frequently and most importantly is changed by a third party like content creators. It does not require a rebuild of Next.js app and is quite fast. However, it presents a little problem because now the cache data is cleared and the first users that requested data may experience some delay. This issue can actually be mitigated by rebuilding the app as well, because as we've seen, when you rebuild the app, uh, the data is cached again. Another thing to remember is protect the route that invalidates cache with a secret or HMAP. In general, developing in the environment that is close to production as possible has its obvious advantages. As we noticed, uh, when building Next.js app, the full static routes are not being cached. They're only cached when those routes are accessed. And most importantly, we also observed that rebuilding our Next.js app won't cache the new data. The best way to cache this behavior is to use Redis Cache locally. If you would like to learn how to use Redis Cache with Next.js, please check out this video.